Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RVing in New England. It is August 22nd already, and the summer is quickly disappearing. And yes, this is RVing in New England. Yes, that is a different graphic because I couldn't get the regular graphic to play the way that I wanted it tonight. So I'm going to drop that down and bring Mr. DePietro up, and we'll have a few words to say here. Hey, John, how you doing? Hello, Mr. Zagami. You didn't introduce yourself, so I will introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. Welcome to RVing in New England. Oh, okay. The host of the show and my co-host. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you the very much. Only Bob Zagami. Right. Mr. Right. RV in New England. So talk about RVing in New England. You had a, a nice stint down at uh, Arlington RV on Saturday with our on-site, Facebook Live on-site online for three hours of videos. Tell us how it went. The, the videos were fantastic. And I think Jim Taro is the new star in New England for Arlington RV. Right, right. I tell you, I had such a great time when we were at Arlington RV down in East Greenwich, Rhode Island. It's their 70th anniversary, and they're on, I thought, Bob, they were on their third generation, but Jim and Jay both told me that they have their kids coming in, so now they have four generations. Yeah, imagine that. You know, we're yeah. so lucky in New England to have family-owned businesses still dominate the scene, and um, you know what? Uh, they provide a lot of jobs for people. But more than that, they provide good times and memories for the people that have visited there. And we had so many customers come in. And, um, you know, many of them asked to be on camera once they saw us doing videos. And they volunteered um, their impressions of why they've come back, sometimes two, three, and four units from Arlington RV. So we want to wish them happy 70th anniversary. And, and two and three and four generations of customers besides exactly. four generations of right. Uh, family. Right. That one cup, that one thing, we had a husband, wife, a daughter, and then the granddaughter was coming in um, um, later that morning to um, take advantage of the free refreshments. That's that's fantastic. Imagine 70 years. And next year we have 60 years uh, anniversary for Longview RV coming up uh, in 2019. So we always manage to have a big anniversary every year with our generational families that have RV dealerships here in New England. Well, tonight's kind of a special night. Uh, I'm going to bring our guest right up so we can hear what I say about him. He's a repeat. He's a repeat. That, that, that's right. Uh, our first repeat guest on RVing in New England, Chris Doherty. Hi, guys. How you doing? Fantastic, Chris. Great to have this you back. People, this is not a repeat oh. show. This is a live, brand new show. Exactly. Where Anything can happen, and usually does. That's, yes. Well, that, that's true. Uh, Chris has been – he hasn't stopped since the last time we had him on the show. And uh, I know you just got back from Elkhart. We got a lot of questions. I know we're going to have a lot of input from our our viewers tonight. But do you want to tell us uh, what you were doing out in Elkhart for Trailer Life and Motorhome? Because I know it's an exciting time of the year, and you go out there two or three years, two or three times a year to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we just got done with our 2018 uh, mo uh, Trailer Life and Motorhome Magazine Testapalooza, uh, which is what I like to call it, and, and we've kind of adopted that. But, uh, uh, you know, for the covers and tests in the magazines, we have to spend uh, quite a bit of time with these uh, units, and we do photo shoots, and, and they're live-in tests. Um, and so to uh, make it a little bit easier uh, for the manufacturers and uh, – uh, also, to be a good uh, experience for our team and uh, to do training and things like that, uh, we bring everybody to Elkhart for two weeks every summer. And uh, we arrange for the rigs to be there, also test vehicles from uh, uh, the major manufacturers. And uh, we get some of those covers knocked out over those two weeks. I think it's important to point out, Chris, that you do live in these. You don't just yeah. uh, drive to the manufacturer or to a dealer and walk around for a few hours I mean, you take the plastic off, you take the shipping stuff off, and you actually live in these things. So you you run the water, you turn on the air conditioner, you test the steps, you make sure the hot water's hot, the cold water's cold, the showers work, and the slides go in and out. So uh, I think that's yeah, important. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we, we have three different types of tests. Okay, we have the full test, which is just like you described it, uh, where there are live-in tests, and the unit is uh, usually has a pre-delivery inspection before we get it. Uh, and is all set and ready to go. And we pick it up from the manufacturer, from a dealer, or it's delivered to us, uh, just like you would get it uh, if you were purchasing your RV uh, at a dealership. 
and we take it out to camp, take them out to campgrounds, and uh, uh, you know we live in them and we test all the different systems, and our riders uh, evaluate the rigs for livability and uh, and operation, and and you know we measure everything on the rig. So we'll take it out and uh, do a wet weight on it. Uh, we measure uh, against the specs and make sure that the uh, uh, you know all the specifications are correct and you know we kind of check the whole thing out so we can report back on it the second type of test we do is called a close-up and that's uh, a step down from the full test uh, there are some manufacturers that uh, you know would prefer we didn't do a full live-in test on their uh, vehicles and so we can take it out for a day or two uh, we don't live in the rig uh, but we do get to uh, drive it or tow it we do a, a nice photo shoot on it and the radar or the writer excuse me gets to spend a uh, decent amount of time on the uh, in the unit, uh, evaluating it, just not using the systems. And then we have a walkthrough, and walkthroughs are just kind of an introductory uh, piece to a new uh, unit or floor plan. And so those are usually about a page long, and uh, the, the photography comes from the manufacturer. So it's a way of introducing our readers to uh, all the different units that are out there. Chris, let me stop you for one second, because in the uh, first test, the live-in test, you mm -hmm. mentioned something about um, measuring, and you used the term weight a couple times. Why yes, is it so important that even the casual RV user be concerned with weights and limits? Why is that important? What, what part of the uh, overall safety does that impact? Well, that's a great question, uh, John. You know, um, especially new RVers really don't get weight. They don't, uh, you know, they're, they're not introduced to it right off the bat. And this is where uh, education programs come in. The RV Safety and Education Foundation, for one, is a, uh, a great resource for that. Uh, we try to cover it in our magazines quite a bit. And the, uh, the reason that you want to pay attention to your weight is because a, a vehicle is an engineered system. Uh, and so everything from the tires to the roof have certain um, engineering limits uh, that they are designed to be able to take. If you exceed those limits, um, at best, you're accelerating the wear on the vehicle. At worst, it can lead to uh, uh, loss of handling or uh, failure yeah. of a, a major component. And, and yeah. uh, that, can be, that can be a problem. So whether, whether you have a, a tow vehicle and a trailer uh, or a motorhome, you wanna pay real close attention to your weights. It's very important. Good point. Good point. Hey, Bob, we, um, uh, Jerry's in Michigan tonight. We're following Jerry as he uh, moves across the Commonwealth. He started in Massachusetts and he's doing the Route 2 trip. All across, across the country. Across the country. No man across the Commonwealth. Right. Well, he started going across, you know, actually, he didn't go across the Commonwealth. He went up to Vermont. And, um, but Jerry's in Michigan. And um, Jory, are you staying there for a week or so, or are you just staying for a night then moving on? Because I know this is like a, a several week journey of yours. He'll he'll tell us that for sure. Jerry, are you at the uh, Petoskey KOA, or are you uh, living luxury at the uh, Hearthside Grove Luxury RV Resort up there? We'll see what he has to say uh, on that as we go along. Well, you know, Chris, one of the reasons that we wanted to bring you on tonight was it kind of coincided with your testing out in Elkhart, but also mm -hmm. an article that uh, showed up on your newsletter online that I thought was just tr a tremendous article, and it called the RV Clinic FAQ, Top 20 Tech Questions. So uh, as we get into this, yes, KO, Jerry's at the KOA. All right, it was too expensive down the street at Hearthside Grove. That, that's probably what it was, but that's great to have you, Jerry. A couple of days there, all right. Uh, and and Walter, uh, Walter Swenson, another regular. <laughs> Jerry says at a hundred dollars a night, somebody has to change the sheets in the morning. Well, you know, uh, after paying a hundred bucks a night, um, <laughs> you would have to change the sheets, right? For reasons yeah. that we can't discuss on a family broadcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Walton's got a good comp. This is interesting because, you know, there are issues these days about quality and, you know, we're, we want to make sure that RVs have a, a pleasant experience. But Jerry says he suspects the that they inspect them closer when giving them to you guys uh, versus going to pick out one at random. I assume you don't have the luxury of uh, taking 
random units off the lot that you know they they pick up and deliver or, or tell you which ones they're going to have for you. Uh, as a rule, they do, but um, actually, we do get them from dealers uh, sometimes. So it's arranged ahead of time, and and they basically work uh, uh, with a dealer. And we've worked with dealers here in New England uh, to do tests before uh, some of the the members. So um, you know they'll uh, prep the rig uh, ahead of time and and uh, and give it to us. So that works out um, uh, pretty well. The funny part about Elkhart, though, is there aren't many RV dealers. No, well, you know, there's actually a few, um, you know, that are there, like the one right next to the campground, and uh, um, and they're all over the place. So they, you know, whether you're in Elkhart or Middlebury or or Goshen or wherever, there's uh, plenty of places to get RVs, and a lot of them are, you know, get your RV where it's made, you know, buy it. In, uh, if you're gonna, that's right. If you're gonna have a fifteen hundred miles on it, you might as well have it your fifteen hundred miles and not the transport company. Yep. <laughs> so there's something to be said about that. So Chris, twenty. You know what? That article uh, that was a collaboration amongst many of your peers and, and your coworkers. So you want to tell us a little bit about all of you? Who, we know who you are, but tell us about the other three that worked on the article with you. So absolutely. So we have our tech team, and uh, uh, I'm I'm the new guy uh, at the magazines. And if you've been a subscriber to Motorhome and Trailer Life for a long time, you know the um, the other gentleman, uh, Chris Hemer, is an automotive writer and my predecessor as a technical editor uh, for the magazines. And um, he's been uh, he's worked with us for about 20 years. And uh, he actually moved up to um, uh, Oregon recently. And uh, so he still works very hard in contributing uh, to the magazines, does a fantastic job. Uh, he's actually starting some of our 2019 coverage uh, in uh, Oregon as we speak. Uh, another name that doesn't need uh, any uh, an introduction, Jeff Johnston, um, who uh, I know you guys uh, know very well. And Jeff was the technical director for Trailer Life for 20 years, uh, uh, and uh, he is also an avid RVer. He's the host of Rolling on TV, as you all know. And um, uh, he, has, uh, he continues to be a contributor to this day, and he's the guy who actually uh, works the uh, RV clinic column uh, every month. And then, of course, uh, uh, Bob Livingston, who is uh, uh, our former publisher, and uh, he started at the magazines back in 1971. So I was this many when he started, um, yes. and he's been uh, he's been at it for a very long time. RV uh, Hall of Fame inductee and uh, um, and all around uh, technical expert and and great guy. So um, we all kind of contributed to it. All right, you got your list there. So there's 20 of them. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna randomly pick one out. But I'm gonna ask you to start off and uh, pick one out, and let's kick it around. Let me just make sure we recognize everybody we got here. We got uh, uh, Hi, Don. Don is on. Don Paul. Hi, Don. So she's there, and Jerry Plant we got, and Walter Swenson we got, and we got a few more. Okay, so go ahead, shoot. Well, um, we can take a look at the, the first one, and you know this is particularly important, uh, and we're going into the fall show season, which is then followed by the winter season. A lot of people are purchasing new RVs during this time. People will be going to the Hershey show coming up here in a couple of weeks. And so the big question comes up, and this is one that uh, I actually have family members that, kind, that uh, have gotten into that question, is can I tow this uh, heavy trailer uh, or overweight trailer with my current tow vehicle, and uh, if not, why not? Um, and so that's a, a really important thing. And again, it gets back to the question you asked me a few minutes ago about the um, weight limits uh, for vehicles and that they're engineered to a certain specification. Tow vehicles are the same way. So uh, when you have a tow vehicle that's rated to tow a certain amount, uh, you don't want to exceed that. Uh, it's going to affect your handling. It can affect the uh, uh, reliability of your vehicle and uh, your safety. Uh, so you want to make sure that you match your vehicle up. So the best way to do that, you can take a look at our, our tow guides. So you can go to trailerlife.com. There's no charge for this. All of our tow guides going back many years are on the website. And you can look up your vehicle by model year, and we come out with a new one every year. You should also check your owner's manual, and you can also check the manufacturer towing guides uh, online if you're buying a brand new vehicle. 
And uh, if you're, and then make sure that you were buying enough vehicle to tow the RV that you own or that you want to purchase. And uh, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of uh, extra capacity there, uh, just to make sure so you have some some room to grow with it. And you're going to check to make sure that the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer uh, does not exceed the towing capacity of the uh, tow vehicle. And you also want to make sure that your tongue weight or your pin weight, if you're using a fifth wheel, doesn't exceed the cargo capacity of the tow vehicle. Um, so, so Chris, that's really important. I, I think, I think uh, Walter, Walter, with tongue and tongue and tongue, <laughs> maybe you want to address. Uh, uh, I'm got, sorry? Feedback from you, Bob. You know. I don't know. We got background. When you talk. Some, some dealers do tell people just put some airbags on. You want to address that issue? Yeah, absolutely. So there are a lot of suspension and powertrain enhancements out there. And some of them are really good. They're great uh, components to have and they make the, uh, they can make the handling better and, uh, uh, and so forth of the vehicle. Uh, you know, they can give you a little bit of extra um, for a little bit of extra power. The one thing that none of these will do is improve the uh, capacities or the, the, whether it's the weight capacities or towing capacities of the vehicle. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and this is one of the questions that's in here, and I might as well uh, address it while I'm at it. Well, and that, that is that, you know, member, can you? I think a member of the fan club just showed up. <laughs> hey, Karen. Hi, Karen. You're um, hiding uh, else, elsewhere in the house. You can certainly come in and wave if you want. Uh, nice to have you join us, Karen. Yep, she's in town uh, this evening, actually. So, okay. Um, but uh, at any rate, um, so one of the um, uh, questions that people ask is, can I can I increase the tow rating or the gross vehicle weight rating of my vehicle? And the, the basic answer to that is no, uh, for the most part. Uh, to do that would require a lot of certifications to be to be done on the vehicle and inspections and things like that. Um, you can add things like airbags, uh, sway bars, uh, like I said, powertrain enhancements, things like that to improve how the vehicle operates, but you still can never exceed uh, the manufacturer ratings. Hey, Chris, um, there are many units that I see on the street now, especially when I've, we've been at these dealerships for the last month doing all of our videos. I see the name and then it says light, L-I-T-E, and now I'm also seeing ultra light. Is there mm -hmm. any scientific definition of what light or ultralight is, despite the fact that it's just lighter than heavy? Um, yeah, that, that's about it. Um, so they, it they market, marketing word. Yeah, they're they're you know people are looking for uh, they always want more space in their RV um, and be able to tow it with smaller vehicles, and so it, it's always a a, a catch you know, say that this is a lighter RV, it's going to be more fuel efficient, you can tow more trailer with, um, you know, a smaller vehicle, that type of thing. Um, you know, when it comes to how the trailer is is built, there usually are uh, some lighter materials or things like that that are used in it versus, let's say, an old school stick and tin. But uh, for the most part, it's, you know, you if you go look at a trailer and you know it, it, it says light, ultra light, super light, whatever on it, um, you still have to look at the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer and compare it to the tow vehicle to make right. sure that uh, you're right. going to be able to tow that's, it. Okay. That's the most important thing. And uh, you know, one of your other questions, I think you were starting to go there, was you know the importance of people having their units weighed. I know uh, our mm -hmm. safety and education foundation does a lot of weighing at rallies and at their upcoming university, but uh, where do people get them weighed and what uh, cautions do you have for people who are using the public scales? So, um, you know, if you can get your RV weighed by wheel position, it's always preferred that way because an RV, it isn't like a, a uh, an engineered automobile where, you know, when they design it, it's the same weight going in the same positions all the way around. An RV uh, is so large that the way we load an RV uh, and uh, the way that, uh, uh, you know, when we put items in it, when we put ourselves in it, things like that can very, uh, can alter the balance of the vehicle. So it can be heavier on one side or on one wheel position versus another one. So it's nice to know that. 
Uh, not everybody can get weighed by wheel position, so I always uh, like to recommend going to a multi-position, uh, a multi-platform scale like cat scales, or we have pride scales here in Massachusetts, um, as well as the cat scales. There's different ones all over the country. Um, you know, those of you who, those of you who have pilot flying J card, you know, most of the pilots and flying Js all have the caterpillar, the, the cat scales, excuse me. Um, and so if you um, uh, weigh on those, uh, it will at least get you in the ballpark, and that's going to improve your safety overall. Um, you know, so when, when I've done evaluations and stuff, typically it's only about ten dollars to get it weighed. It's such an mm -hmm. important figure. Uh, yeah. you, know, you spend ten dollars in the Coke machine, so spend ten dollars at the scale out front. I weigh mine uh, pretty frequently. Actually, I did on this trip and uh, I have on other trips just to see where I'm at when I'm loaded. You know, when I go out for the test of Palooza, I'm carrying a lot of extra equipment and and uh, gear with me. And uh, so I like to see where I'm where I'm at when I'm uh, carrying all that. Uh, and so it's 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 nice to see that. if I make a big change in the RV. You know, our Coleman is used in trailer life quite a bit for different things. We've added a lot of um stuff to it over the years doing these tech projects and that's actually affected the weight of the trailer um, uh, substantially from its original design Jerry, Jerry, so it's always important to try to sit within that and be yeah. uh jerry's got an interesting comment there you want to uh, address and jerry's down at uh, mage's rv and we always like to go down there and see those guys but uh, what about that capacity question because i know some manufacturers have been criticized as far as the the particular axles and wheels that they put on the units. Well, there, there's some, uh, there's some truth to that for sure. Um, you know, we, um, we've seen uh, axles and tires that are uh, a little bit more lightly rated, and they're putting a little bit more emphasis on the the pin weight or the the ton weight. Uh, however, you know, just changing out the axles and the suspension and the tires doesn't increase the uh, GVW of the trailer. It, again, it's an engineered system. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not an engineer, so I can't sit there and say that the frame is going to, uh, to hold up to that. But I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. We had when I was at Diamond RV is there was a gentleman from Ohio that was coming through with a new, newer travel trailer uh, coming through Massachusetts on vacation blew a tire and the tire came apart and it actually ripped the spring shackle from the frame and a chunk of the frame out. So what that tells me is, is that there's different uh, strengths to the frames and the rails, uh, depending on the engineering of the, the overall vehicle. And uh, we ended up rechassing that trailer and the guys up at Diamond did a fantastic job of that, jacking it up um, uh, using the lift system. And, and we were got a new frame from Lippert and, uh, um, you know, slid it underneath there. But getting back to the original thing, uh, does it hurt to change your axles and change your tires and things like that? No, it doesn't. But what they attach to um, sometimes could be, um, you know, are, are you're not increasing the ratings of those. So again, it's important to think of the whole unit as a system and uh, that all the pieces are engineered together. A vehicle, your tow vehicle or motorhome is the same way. So your uh, weight ratings are based on uh, not only the frame and the axles and the tires and the wheels, but the universal joints, uh, the transmission, um, the attachments to the frame, et cetera. So everything is designed to work together. So that's where, you know, if you want to wanted to increase, let's say, the gross vehicle weight rating of your vehicle, uh, there would be some engineering involved to figure out that all the materials of the vehicle, um, you know, go together. I'm going to put I'm going to put this one up for I'm going to put this one up for Walter and Esther. Uh, when you're down at the university, you put in a good word for the Northeast. I've talked to Walter, I've spoken to Walter a couple of times about trying to get one of the teams up here. Now, one of the problems, Walter, is there's only so many teams around the country and they kind of pick and choose where they want to go and what kind of revenue they can generate from that. But uh, we have not had the, the RV safety people up here weighing for quite some time, probably not since the uh, big FMCA convention three or four years ago. But, uh, so Chris, you're going to be an instructor at that university this year, right? You've been added to the staff. I have. And uh, it's a great honor. I'm, I'm delighted to do it. Uh, so I'll be actually leaving uh, open house a day early to drive down there. And uh, so I'll be with them for a couple of days. Great. It'll be, uh, it'll be good. 
All right, just, pick, up another, pick up another question. I'm going to show something, John. Yeah, there were a couple of terms, Chris, that you used earlier. I'd just like you to uh, expand upon them for um, anybody that may be watching that is not really totally familiar with the jargon. Um, and there are three words, three terms. One, you said stick and pin. And number two, you said um, way by wheel position. Mm -hmm. And the third thing, if you could kindly discuss the um, how you take water into account. In other words, should you be driving with full tanks? And I remember from eighth grade science class, water weighs eight pounds a gallon. And um, if you've got full clean tanks and full holding tanks, you're carrying a considerable amount of weight that you don't really think you have there. So if you could just ex expand upon those three points, I think it would be good. Sure. Well, um, you're actually uh, you don't you don't remember school as well as you think you do. It's actually eight point three three pounds per gallon. Okay, I'm trying. It's one science. Well, uh, adjusted to inflation. <laughs> adjusted for inflation, absolutely. No, but um, uh, so when we talk about stick and tin, uh, that is how the original RVs were built. It is wood frame, uh, aluminum siding. Uh, you'll have your paneling on the inside. It's built just like a, a stick-built house. Okay. So it's a little bit of a, a slang term we use uh, in the industry uh, to talk about those those types of trailers. But um, uh, it's old school, but it's it's strong and it works pretty well. And and uh, so a lot of people like to go that route when they buy a travel trailer. And back in the day, motorhomes were even built that way. But you know, as time has gone on, of course, we've had new technologies come in uh, to place. Um, so when you talk about wet weight, uh, and this is an important uh, distinction, uh, at Motorhome and Trailer Life, when we do a full test, we weigh the RVs and we weigh them wet. Um, so they have a full fresh water tank and a full water heater. And of course, there's water in the piping and stuff, which is pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. But we, we weigh them wet. And the reason that we do that is because most RVers are going to want to know how much um, gear and uh, other items they can put in an RV uh, and still carry a full tank of water because a lot of people do like to boondock, especially yeah. out, out west. Mm -hmm. And so they like to know, hey, if I put a full tank of water in this, how much can I carry? And that's both with motorized and with towables. So that's why a wet weight is important. That said, um, if you don't have to carry water, don't. And I, and what I personally do, I carry a third of a tank of water so that if I stop off on the side of the road, you know, at a rest area or whatever, I can use the facilities. I can I can clean up some dishes from lunch or whatever the, the deal may be. Or if I stop overnight at a Flying J or something like that, I can uh, have some water to use. Uh, I dump my tanks uh, before I leave the campground, and I do that every time. So can you drive with the tanks uh, full? Uh, yes, for a small distance, I prefer to say, go get them dumped before you hit the road on a long journey. Okay. Um, it's there because it's, it's affecting your, not only the, the handling of the vehicle. And if you, if you have it loaded to the max and then you fill your tanks, why then you're, um, you know, overloading the vehicle, of course, but, uh, you know, why reduce your, your fuel economy and so forth. And okay. why carry a bunch of crap with you that you don't need to carry with you. So, so to speak. And um, the wheel, weighing by wheel position. And then the last thing um, was define CCC because a lot of people get confused with what that actually is. Okay. So weighing by wheel position uh, is done using a bunch of platform scales. So um, you'll sometimes see the Department of Transportation officers have a truck off on the side of the road and they're uh, weighing the uh, weighing a truck and they'll they'll drive it up onto these plat these little you know uh, portable scales and so what those do is they give you the opportunity to put each wheel on one of these scales and see exactly what the downforce is on that uh on that position so especially with motorhomes where you have slide outs and you have you know cabinets and appliances and different things going on uh you can sometimes have a difference in weight per wheel position, and you could find that one wheel position over another one is overloaded. And uh, sometimes it, it, it's not unheard of that that can be a design issue from the factory that's happened in the past, uh, but it, it can also be a matter of loading. So if you take your bowling ball collection 
and put it in the front, uh, you know, passenger side compartment of your motorhome, uh, there's a good possibility that you could overload the front wheel on that side, or it would be substantially heavier than the other one. So again, the idea is you want to have good balance uh, throughout the system, so uh, throughout the vehicle, and um, and and that improves your handling and uh, should work out a lot better for you. And CCC is the last one. Cargo carrying capacity. Yep. So there's a, a there's a couple of different ones that you want to do. Again, the cargo carrying capacity um, is your basically the amount of cargo you can carry in an RV. Um, by law, the uh, RV weight is determined uh, or calculated with full flu with full fuels. So you're it yeah. would be calculated with full propane tanks, but water is considered cargo. So that's why we do a wet. Uh, weight at uh, trailer life and motorhome. So we, we make sure you have that. The only other thing that you want to look at is uh, your occupant cargo carrying capacity with a motorhome. And that's the amount of weight with um, uh, passengers in the vehicle. So there it's calculated. I think it's a hundred, it, it's calculated at 150 pounds per passenger, um, yeah. which I saw a long, long, long time ago uh, myself, but um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's not our average, that's for sure. No, <laughs> that's but, that's uh, the corporate average fuel economy. Yeah. I'm sorry? That's, that's the AFE. That's some government standard. But who the hell weighs 150 pounds today in a campground? You don't see any of those people. Unless they're a 14 year old kid, they can't drive anyway. That's it. That's it. Well, I guess that's the average. If you take the parents out of the picture and you have, uh, you know, teenager, younger kids, then, uh, you know, I guess they fit into that pretty well. So, yeah, pick out, pick out another one, Chris. All right. Um, so, you know, a lot of people ask where, whether they should get a trailer or a motorhome. And again, as we get into show season here and, and, and people are going to be going, you know, to Hershey, which is one of America's largest RV shows. Um, you know, the, especially brand new people that are new to the lifestyle are kind of wondering, geez, what should I do? And um, there, there's a lot of things to consider when you're doing that. Um, and we kind of toss this one around a little bit. And, um, uh, you know, when you're, if you're going to be going and, and I was a full-time RVer for 10 years, I started out on a travel trailer and then I had a couple of motorhomes. I've been um, and I've met a lot of full-timers over the years. So it kind of depends on what you're going to do with the RV. If you're the kind of person that uh, likes to spend a lot of time behind the wheel and you're kind of stopping for briefer periods at different locations and a motorhome may be for you, it has some definite um, pluses in that you can uh, you know, easily stop on the side of the road and get up and go to the bathroom, go into the kitchen um, and, and get stuff without going outside. Uh, I, I remember going south to Florida one, one year and I got to Carmel Church, Virginia and pulled into the Flying J for the night and a nor'easter came up and I was stuck there for a couple of days and, um, or yeah, about a day and a half. And, uh, you know, I had the generator on board and I, I didn't have to get out of the coach. I could just sit there and watch the snow come barreling in on us and we had 24 inches of snow and uh um you know we there were other rvers there there was a guy next to me who had an old class c with no generator i plugged him into mine and and off we went we you know we were there um you know through the the period so it worked out pretty well uh so that's that's you know some of the nice things about having a motor home uh you know on the negative side if you have a breakdown uh your home breaks down with you so if you have to get towed uh you know, to a, a truck repair facility or something like that, probably going to have to find alternate living uh, accommodations. So a motel, hotel, whatever. Um, if you're, uh, and then, you know, in a lot of cases, especially, well, just about any case, the mechanics are pr probably going to have to come through the RV uh, to make repairs. So whether it's a diesel pusher and they have to come all the way through to the back or they're going under the dog house up in the front on a, on a gas unit. Um, there's, you know, there's going to be some of that also, which some people find objectionable. Um, if you have a towable, uh, you know, they, they can be a little bit, uh, you know, fifth wheel, certainly larger, um, that it has more space in it. Uh, and in a lot of cases you can have your uh, trailer towed to a campground if your tow vehicle breaks down. And, uh, 
most tow vehicles, whether it's a Ford pickup or Chevy, Ram, whatever it is you have, um, it's going to be a lot easier to find a repair facility for that. So it can get towed to the local dealership. And, and for the most part, uh, they can take care of that. I got stuck on my trip. I broke down actually on the way out to, to Elkhart. And the uh, uh, first Ford dealership I went to, the closest one, uh, they said, sorry, we can't help you. We don't have a diesel tech. But they referred me to their competing dealership, which was only about 10 minutes away. And we were able to get the truck over there and they fixed it within the hour and I was on the way. They had the parts in stock. So, um, and that's something that doesn't always happen, you know, when you're in a motorhome. So uh, there's pros and cons to both. Uh, you know, of course you can't go get up and go back into the trailer easily. Um, you know, you can't sit at the dinette. A lot of motorhomes, the dinettes have seatbelts and even child restraint uh, tethers. So people can be sitting at the table and playing cards or doing whatever they want while they're uh, going down the road, makes it more comfortable. Um, and of course you have access to the bathroom and so forth. Uh, whereas with a trailer, you know, that can be more difficult. And uh, a lot of trailers today have slide outs that come in. You actually can't get in the trailer, right. um, you know, until you put the slides out. So and that, yeah. that goes true for both uh, motorhomes as well as trailers. I've seen motorhomes where it's pretty close too. Sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I just saw that last week at a place where there was a big, uh, it was a big Dutch star that when mm -hmm. both slides were in, you had to like weasel your way to get down to the back. Chris, one of the terms that I use when I try to define um, if people say, which, should I get a towable or should I get a motorized? I kind of use the, the terminology that if you're a traveler, meaning you go from place to place to place, a motorhome might be your thing. But if you're a destination person where you're going to stay for four or five days or a week or longer, then a travel trailer may be it because it gives you a little bit more home-like amenities. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the motorhomes certainly give you a lot of great amenities also. And, and yeah. there's also, a, you know, there, there are budget factors to it also. So I don't like to necessarily take each type of RV and, and, uh, you know, put, put it in those boxes. I don't, yeah. you know, because it, and then there's, and then there's people that just prefer one over another. doesn't make it bad. And I've seen motorhomes set up as seasonal units, uh, on plenty of occasions. So, um, we like you know, a lot of it, a lot sure. of it is personal preference yeah. and when you go and actually look at an rv you know if you're inside you're it, it's comfortable you enjoy it puts a smile on your face that's the rv for you, you know? yeah i get that question all the time in my seminars and i refuse to answer it because unless you know the budget the lifestyle the number of kids places they want to go how they want to use it you know i always tell them go out and look over the whole show and look over everything and then come back and we'll talk about what you think you might want to come back the next day but the uh, other thing is, I want to put a question. Talk to the, the number of people that we talk to that have owned both. You know, they mm -hmm. started with a with a travel trailer, went up to a Class C, over to a travel trailer, back to a Class A, over to a fifth wheel. A lot of people, you know, switch off every other unit or so. That's interesting. And, it, and if, their, if their needs change, right? You know, if your your needs change from one thing to another, it, it may be worth it to to change up the style of RV. You know, they're yep. they're designed for all kinds of different uh, uses. Okay, I need Maria. I need you to explain a little bit more about that because I'm not sure if that relates to Walter's earlier question of the 150 pounds or the weighing. So if you would just. Uh, Put another comment up there and let us know what you were thinking there. While she does that, Chris, want to grab another question? So um, one of the questions that comes up, and this has been a big subject um, lately, a uh, big question that people have had relates to tires. And so, um, you know, and, and trailers uh, specifically, a lot of people are having uh, blowouts. I had... Uh, one last year, um, um, and Bob Livingston blew two or three on his way out from California. Um, and so there's a lot of concern about, um, you know, how to prevent tires from blowing out. Well, there's a few reasons why that's happening. Uh, there are cheap tires on the market that are uh, imported tires, and uh, that's a, a, an issue right now uh, that um, the tire industry and the RV industry are, are working to correct. So there was just some uh, discussion about that on the, the industry level and they're increasing the um, uh, amount of uh, uh, the percentage of um, 
uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? The, the uh, between the the weight of the trailer and the capacity of the tire. So there's there's going to be some more give there uh, to try to improve that. Um, there's also some other things that you can do uh, to make sure that you don't have blowouts. Um, if you are going to replace your tires, um, you know uh, we talked about this before that tires are, do are, are part of the system when it comes to the GVW of your trailer. Um, you can't still can't exceed the GVW of your trailer, but if you do go up in size and capacity on the tire, one size uh, sometimes that can work. There are a number of different uh, uh, factors you have to look at. What can the wheels uh, handle as far as uh, pressure? Uh, you're not going to be able to exceed, uh, you know, again, the GVW of the trailer uh, or the axles, the gross axle weight rating. Uh, but uh, they may actually give you a little bit better service um, and you can keep your pressures down a little bit. So uh, uh, I'm trying that right now on my trailer. Uh, and I bought uh, tires that are speed rated. Um, trailer tires are, uh, if they do not have a speed rating on them from the manufacturer, they're rated at either 62 or 65 miles an hour. Um, so when you exceed that, you're heating the tires up and that can, uh, lead to premature failure, uh, with the, uh, the heating of the, the tire. Chris, did we lose Chris? I did that. Okay. I, let me, let me ask this question. I hope Chris can still Chris, hear you. I, I, there we go. I, I went to uh, get rid of your name, and I got rid of you instead. Uh, let me jump back one question. Uh, Maria clarified, and she said that her pet peeve was in reference to be able to get through the coach when the slides are closed, which I understand that, but that's also why when you go to a dealer or to a show, you're not going to get it at the show. When you go to a dealer and the units are all open and they look beautiful and they're really wide, yep. they but can – Make him put the slides in so that you can see what it's going to be like and how much access you're going to have. And I'm always amazed at how many people didn't do that before they bought the coach because RVs are intoxicating. You, you fall in love with them, and it's an impulse decision, but there's so much that you have to understand before you put that money down. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, and, it, and that's not necessarily a problem for everybody, right? So, um, you know, if you prefer to have the better living space when you get to your campground and you can live with the restricted access to the RV while you're on the road, that's right. fine. That's a decision that uh, you need to make. You, when these slides open up, these floor plans can be really fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, you know, personally, I like to make sure that I can access the refrigerator. So if I go shopping, I stop at uh, the grocery store while I'm on the road and, and want to put stuff in the refrigerator in the cabinets, I can get in most of them. Um, I like to be able to get in the refrigerator and I like to be able to get into bed without putting the slides out. Uh, okay. So if I stay out of Flying J or something like that, that I can, uh, you know, just to sleep for a little while, that I can do that without putting the slides out. That's my personal preference. You brought up something very interesting. I want, to, I want you to expand on it. Um, We've done a lot of traveling this year. I think like five or six thousand miles on the interstate highways and the, you know, the secondary roads. And I'm amazed at the number of people. And I will generally go between, the, between fifty nine and sixty three miles an hour because I was told by the professional drivers that drive all these entertainer stars around mm -hmm. with the big forty five foot Prevos. They said no matter how fast you go, you're going to average fifty miles an hour. Right. Well, it's a 500 mile trip. If if you're going 75 miles an hour, you're still going to take you 10 hours to get there because you got tolls. You got to stop for, um, you know, rest stops and fuel. <laughs> but I was amazed this year in particular the number of people, both motorhomes and towables, of people blowing by me at at least 70, 75 miles an hour. And and I'm saying to my wife, I said, I just hope that that person is going as an emergency and it's going to pull over. Um, but describe that um, over 70 mile an hour speed. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think a vehicle ought to be able to go to the speed limit and uh, in the, and there's certainly circumstances where the flow of traffic is, if it's, is going so fast that it can be yeah. hazardous um, to go too slowly in that, that said, there's two other factors you have to look at. One is, of course, like I mentioned, the speed rating of your tires being 62 or 65 miles an hour, you don't want to exceed that. 
How does the second make, is the driving, driving condition. So if you have a, uh, you know, if you're you're driving something a large vehicle like an RV, um, you can't react uh, on, you know, in the space of a dime, you know, and you can't stop on a dime, and you can't turn on a dime, and and so you need to uh, you need to drive uh, safely. You need to be thinking ahead of where you're driving. Um, and uh, be, you know, kind of prepared in the eventuality that you have to make uh, an emergency decision. And um, if you're going too fast, especially with an RV, a lot of cases you can't do that. Right. So that's something that's very important to uh, to yeah. keep in mind. When I'm on the road and stuff, I, it's 50 miles, like you say, John, you have figure your trip at 50 miles an hour. No matter what you do, it's going to come right out on that number. Mm -hmm. Jerry, Jerry says... Time to light the fire. See it. Well, he's at the campground. We're not. Yeah, well, get get your computer outside. You know, by the campfire. <laughs> why, why would you shut us off just to go out and set up a campfire? Dad. Yeah. yeah take your tab Take your tablet outside. That's right. You know, okay. and this, uh, this be millennial. Age, this is the age of technology, Jerry. But yeah. mention, mention Marie. Put pop up Maria's uh, quote there about thirty six years of RV. Um. She does check tires. I presume, Maria, you mean you're checking tires. No, I think she's talking about checking the, the when the slides oh, are in. Okay, whether or not slide outs. Yeah. yeah, when the slide outs are, are in. But you can correct this, Maria, if I guessed wrong on that. And Maria, I think you blurred a picture of my grandson as your profile picture because it looks just like my grandson. This is crazy. We're almost 50 minutes into this conversation. All right. Yeah, we only got three questions. Got one, Chris. You got you got three more questions, or you want Chris to? No, I'm done. No, oh, no, I said Chris. we've only okay. asked. We've only had Chris be able to ask three questions because. <laughs> well, uh, that's that's why I prefaced it and said we are not going to get through twenty questions. <laughs> and <laughs> let's let's face it, this is probably America's largest audience participation show when it comes to the topic of RVs. Yeah, and, and guess guess who just showed up late to the party? Good. There he is. Hi, Hi, Mike. <laughs> late, late to the party. Well, it's That's a good thing because we were talking about him anyway, right? So. It's been raining <laughs> all day. He can't be out riding his motorcycle. He must have had a, a beer and a barbecue that took prece precedence over us. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> we're just Maria, a lot of work. Maria, just type in where you're, where you're calling from, where you're watching from. Um, Kansas, you, Chris. Yeah, I don't know exactly. Okay, Chris, pick out another question. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of people uh, are concerned about trailer sway. And recently I've been, uh, you know, I, I had a, an issue with that myself. And so I wanted to see um, what the deal was and, and how I could fix it. And I so we answer these questions quite a bit. So first we get back to the whole weight thing. And um, so having your RV properly uh, weighed and balanced is very important. So tra like the travel trailer, you want to have uh, at least 10%, 10 to 12% uh, of the weight of the trailer on the tongue. Uh, if it's uh, uh, too far to the rear, uh, it can cause uh, additional sway. So you want to make sure of that. You want to make sure your tires are properly inflated for the weight of your trailer. Um, and... Uh, you know, because if they're underinflated, that can uh, cause them to be a little bit more sloppy. Uh, and then the obvious thing, which uh, which can happen, and, it, and this is this is an interesting thing. When I first found out about it, and then I thought about it, I said, "Boy, this makes sense." But the setup of your hitch is very very important. And when you buy, especially when you buy an RV, and they set the hitch for you, that's the trailer's unloaded, right? It's brand new. When you load down the tow vehicle and you load down the trailer with um, your rocks, your bowling balls, and your cans of SpaghettiOs, um, it changes the ride height of the vehicle. So it can change the dynamics of how the vehicle is going to handle. So uh, if you have bought an RV, for instance, and you find that sway is becoming an issue, uh, you're going to want to get your hitch readjusted. And, uh, you know, again, you want to weigh... Uh, your RV loaded uh, to make sure you're not overweight. So when you're going out on your trip, get on the scale, see where you're at, uh, and then you can adjust your hitch appropriately. The other thing is having the proper hitching equipment. 
And when it comes to buying a hitch, uh, you, you know, in a lot of cases, you get what you pay for. Uh, there are some uh, upgraded uh, hitch systems out there uh, for uh, not only weight distribution, but also sway control. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and go through all of them here. But uh, when you go to your dealer and you're buying your RV, um, consider some of the um, upgraded hitches. It's a little bit of added expense, but when you go on vacation, you know, if your vehicle doesn't handle well, you're going to be really tired by the time you get where you're going. You're not going to enjoy it as much. Oh, and sometimes it can just be a matter of it being a bad uh, hitching system. You're overcorrecting all the time on the trip then, right? You're overcorrecting. It's swaying. Uh, you get more bounce. Uh, it's noisy. Uh, you know, the, the old school uh, weight distribution systems are incredibly noisy. So you're going to the campground and there's clunking and chunking and grinding and it's, it's uh, you know, and, and they're difficult to put on and, um, you know, are they're economical? Do they do the job? Uh, technically, yes, but there are better options out there. And so you can take a look at it. And the sky's the limit. You can go, um, you know, you can pay several thousand dollars for a hitch setup or you can, um, you know, you can keep it down from there. But there's a lot of things to consider. Yeah, Bob, Bob probably has one that he wants to mention that was one of our sponsors earlier in the year. No, we won't mention uh, companies tonight. We, we'll keep this strictly technical. But, you know, rely on your dealer and the dealer's recommendations. But like everything else, you do get what you paid for. Uh, and you have to, uh, again, do your homework. And, and that's mm -hmm. that's an area where a lot of people, especially first-timers, right, Chris? They have no clue. And the oh. dealer says, you know, his, his, get this hitch over here. And, and, you know, you put it on. And it, it's true the first time. I, I know when I first bought had no clue. Now you you learn, and your second one will be better. But uh, what advice do you have for first time RVs, of which there are a lot these days? Well, again, and this is you know the first time RVers, if they're watching this, um, you know, do some research online and look up weight distribution systems and sway uh, 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 prevention systems, and 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 look for, in hitching equipment, and you'll it'll come up with all kinds of different hits. Uh, you can go to our websites, uh, you know, our website for Trailer Life. There's a lot of articles that we've done in the past. We've, we've do, we do a lot of technical installs of all different systems, and people get to review them and, uh, and test them out over time. And uh, so, so we do that. So, so and, uh, <laughs> that, that guy, the guy who's late to the party got, it, got his plug in there for Equalizer. So, that's it. That's it. Actually, actually we're going to have Pat Hunt from Equalizer on uh, September 5th. We're going to have, mm -hmm. uh, they sponsored our April contest. We had some great prizes from them. So, yeah, Mike, we'll, we'll give them a good pat on the back. And uh, Pat's going to be on, uh, did I say April 5th? He'll be on September 5th, right at the Labor Day. Good good wow. plug, Mike. Hey, Bob, before we go any further, one thing that we've been neglecting for people to do or asking them to do, and they do so well yep. every week. Uh, like Maria said, she wants to share these ideas with her uh, daughter and son-in-law. Well, depending upon what um, um, medium you're watching this on, there should be a share button. I know I'm watching the show on my phone as well as watching it through here. And down at the bottom of the phone, there's a share button on the bottom left on an iPhone. And I'm sure on laptops or tablets or whatever, there's a share button. So please be kind enough to share it, maybe even share it and like it. And um, we'd greatly appreciate it because... Chris is giving you some material tonight that it's not commercial. He's not selling a product. He's selling safety. And if there's anything that um, we want to impress upon people when they watch this show is how to enjoy their RV um, safely and over a long period of time. So um, Absolutely. if you folks yeah. share. And um, also, uh, it was great. all of the videos, you can go back in time. All of our shows are archived on this website, go over on the left-hand side, there's a column there. It says videos. If you click on that, you'll be able to see the show, see how many people have viewed the show. And if uh, what a lot of people don't realize, if you right-click on any of those videos, you'll have a, an item that will say copy the URL link. And you can copy that link and send it out to everybody that you want to have it. So all of you... Good Sam chapters. I know they they take the shows and they send them out to their members, and it's just a nice way to do it. And, and typically, that's where we build up the uh, 
the audience is after the show and people start talking about it and sharing it. And that that is critical. Uh, Chris, want to want to grab one more? Yeah, I was just gonna. the The other thing I was gonna say is uh, it's important also for the dealers to hear this is that. You know, when you have a customer that comes in, um, you know, sometimes it's easiest to, you know, if you have one particular system in stock or you have um, one system that you're comfortable with, it's easy to, to, to uh, sell that to your customers. But consider, uh, you know, looking at it a little bit more and looking at the other options that are out there and, and matching it with the, uh, the customer's needs. So that's a real important uh, uh, thing to look at. And you can get a, a you know, it's, it's a little bit of an upsell for the customer, but they're going to be a lot happier with it. So, you know, it's definitely worth taking a look at. So, um, one of the, uh, the so the, one of the questions here: Should I put a cover on my RV when it's in storage? Uh -huh. and, Always, uh, a, almost comes up every week, it seems. But go ahead. Yep, yep absolutely. And uh, uh, you know, I I cover my RV every winter. I store it here in Belchertown, Massachusetts, and. Um, and, uh, so I, I put a cover on it and, uh, it's lasted a lot longer because of it. Uh, RV covers, uh, have, you know, there's a little bit of expense to them, obviously, but, uh, they're designed to help protect the RV. It won't damage the surfaces. It allows moisture to escape, keeps it, uh, uh ventilated, uh, nicely and keeps all the environmental fallout from affecting, uh, the RV. Yeah, and so uh, I'm, I'm, they, they can be a little bit of a, a challenge to put on, especially a larger RV, uh, yeah. but uh, they're definitely worth it. But why, can't, people, why can't I just run out to Home Depot or Lowe's and, and get a big blue tarp for 20 bucks? Why can't I do that? Well, I, I will tell you why. And I had somewhere in my computer, I have pictures of this. Um, I, I took some great shots at a campground here and also up at Tim's RVs. Uh, of, of a unit that had been covered of units, different units that have been covered with tarps. The plastic tarps like you get at the discount stores and things like that are made of plastic and they're abrasive. And so what they will do uh, is first of all, they're not UV stabilized. So over time they're gonna fray and come apart. Uh, and a lot of people say, hey, they're cheap, I don't care. But mm -hmm. as the wind blows on them, doesn't matter how tight you have them tied down, they'll abrade the coach and I've seen them wear right through um, roof membranes. I've seen them take the paint off um, the trailer and do some permanent damage. Uh, that would be, uh, you know, very difficult if not impossible to repair. Uh, well, not to mention the fact they hold moisture underneath. So you'll have mold and mildew and other moisture underneath them. And uh, that can cause a lot of damage to the roof and so forth also. Trying to save a few bucks will cost you more money in the long run. Right. It'll cost you more money in the long run. Yep. Well, gentlemen, and, and, I mean, and an RV cover isn't going to last forever. And that's one of the other things, you know, people ask me, well, I bought this cover and I only had it a few years. And yeah, that that's true. And what it, you know, I like to say the cover kind of becomes the sacrificial anode. So it's taking the abuse and, pro and protecting the big investment, which is the RV. So, you know, obviously the most ideal thing would be able to store it inside a building. But uh, if you can't do that, the RV is the good way of protecting against it. Great, great, super. Hey, folks, I think it's very important to point out here that a lot of the points that Chris is telling us is through experience, because I can say he was a full timer for 10 years. And unlike many people in the RV industry, Chris actually owns an RV. Bob actually owns an RV. I actually own an RV. So it's certainly, I think you get better info from the people that are actually living it day in and day out. Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, I, my RVing experience has, has helped me in the, in the technical side of the industry and vice versa, of course. And, um, you know, I've had some great experiences there and, and I think that's, that's great. The people in our industry who are using the stuff, um, you know, they, they definitely do do well with it and uh, uh, not only for themselves, but in the advice they give to our, to our consumers. Well, we're just about at an hour and, you know, we started this at about a half hour. Maria says she's enjoyed both of those magazines. Well, you can see Chris in both of those magazines every month because he is the technical editor and does a fantastic job with it. Chris, as we Thank said you. at the offset, 
uh, you are our first return guest. So now, now I suppose after we get off the show, Mike Perry's going to call and say, when can I come on for a second time? So, <laughs> but, uh, I want to thank you very much. Uh, John, any uh, closing? Yeah, we want to thank, we, you might not see it here, but Maria invited us all down to her place this winter. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. Give it, yeah. Well, so we're not all there the same week. <laughs> what a, what a I'll be there from January 15th to April 1st. Yeah. At your place. I well, see Mr. Leturco jumped in here. I missed a couple of his comments, but he liked the comments on the, uh, the weight distribution. If we missed anybody else, we always go back through and add uh, the comments for you, or we'll respond to your comments. Yep. Um, Chris, if you want to post your uh, email later, or, or you know, maybe the info uh, lines where people if you want, can get in touch with you or where they should, you know, all the different options they have as far as trailer life and motorhome, yeah. uh, write a magazine, uh, write to those. Uh, John, any closing comments? No, I just want to say thank you so much to Chris. Um, I think every time that we talk, um, even if it's over popcorn and a cheeseburger, I always learn a lot from him. And I, the thing I learned tonight was that tires have speed, um, speed limit, uh, yeah. Not, yeah. what re requirements or regulations or whatever it is. Ratings, so I, yeah, speed ratings. Yep. And I got to check that, out. That's right. true on your um, automobile tires too, and a lot of people miss that. They decide to buy the cheap tires only to find out that they're only rated for 55 miles an hour, and then they have blowouts on the cars. So that that goes hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. Walter's inviting you to Greenfield on Memorial Day weekend. Um, well, let's get in touch. We'll we'll definitely uh, try to to plug lot. that in. Yeah, see if we can get something out there, going out there. And then uh, we have the South Southern New England Good Sam Rally down at uh, Normandy Farms. We've been posting some stuff on that on our website, so we have that also uh, to do that. Chris, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to sign off now, and we'll see you uh, down the road. Sounds great. Thank you both for having us on, and uh, we'll see you over at Trail Life and Motorhome. All right, great job, as always. Have a great evening.